In this video you will learn how to install the storage three-phase inverter. Before we'll install the device, let's identify the inverter interfaces located at the bottom of the inverter. PV strings inputs. Communication gland 1. Communication gland 2. LED indicators. On-off P switch. Battery DC inputs. And last, the AC input. Allow proper heat dissipation, ensure minimum clearance areas between the inverter and other objects. Position the mounting bracket against the wall and mark the drilling hole locations. Drill the holes. Mount the bracket. Use at least two bracket holes dot and mount the bracket. Verify that the bracket is firmly attached to the mounting surface. Hang the inverter on the bracket. Align the two indentations in the inverter enclosure with the two triangular mounting tabs of the bracket. Lower the inverter until it rests on the bracket evenly. Insert and fasten the two supplied screws through the outer heat sink fin on both sides of the inverter. Fasten the inverter to the surface using the bottom bracket. Install the battery in accordance with the manufacturer instructions. In addition, follow these guidelines. Make sure the battery's circuit breaker switch is off. Measure the necessary length between the inverter and the battery for all cables. Connect DC cables to the inverter first as described in the connecting the inverter section. Now we move on to learn how to connect the inverter to AC units, DC strings of modules with power optimizers, energy meter and the battery. Use a 5 wire cable. The maximum wire size for the input terminal blocks is 6 square millimeters. Strip 70 millimeters or 2.6 inch of the external cable insulation and strip 8 millimeters or 0.32 inch of the internal wire insulation. Unscrew the 10 Allen screws holding the inverter cover and remove the cover. Remove the tunnel top cover. Open the AC cable gland, insert the AC cable through the AC output gland and pass the cable through the tunnel. You may need to strip an additional 250mm of the internal wiring insulation to fit the AC cable into the AC tunnel. Thread the AC cable through two ferrite beads supplied with the inverter, 148mm and 139mm. Connect the AC cable to the AC terminals. Connect the grounding wire first. Tighten the terminal block screws. Check that the wires are fully inserted and cannot be pulled out easily and then connect the tunnel cover back. Tighten the AC cable gland. For smart energy management applications, such as maximizing self-consumption, the storage solution requires an energy meter. For communication, the energy meter uses the RS4851 port on the inverter's communication board. Use a three-wire shielded twisted pair cable to connect communication between the inverter to the meter. Connect one end of the communication cable to the energy meter. Open communication gland 2 and insert the other end of the communication cable through the gland. Remove the 3 pin connector from the RS4851 port on the communication board RS485 splitter. Connect the connector back to the RS4851 port. Make sure the RS4851 dip switch which is the left switch is off. Make sure the energy meter's dip switch 2 is on. Set the required Modbus address. For connecting the battery to the inverter, use copper cables with the following parameters, maximum length, 5 meter, cross section area, 35 or 50 millimeter square. Before connecting the DC cables, make sure the battery circuit breaker is off. Strip the required length of the battery's power cables. Crimp the lugs supplied with the inverter on the power cables and tighten them with shrinks. Remove the plastic cover from the battery terminals. The correct polarity is marked on the inverter. 
Pass the ends of the DC cables through a 48mm ferrite bead supplied with the inverter. Pass the ends of the DC cables from the inside of the inverter outwards, through the battery DC input glands. Tighten the power cables to the DC terminal block. Double check for correct battery cables polarity before connection. Connect the other end of the power cables to the battery terminals and tighten the terminals with the screws. Cover the inverter's battery terminals with the cover. Tighten the battery input glands. Connect the grounding cable between the inverter and the battery. Communication between the inverter and battery is established using the CAN bus protocol. Pass the CAN bus cable through communication gland. Connect the cable to the CAN bus connector. Make sure the right dip switches are turned on and put in the left position. Left dip switch, pin 2 and pin 6, selects a grounding pin for the CAN bus connector. Follow the battery manual on how to connect the CAN cable to the battery. Connect the string to the DC input pairs. Connect the DC connectors of each string to the DC plus and DC minus connectors. In order to connect the inverter to the monitoring platform, use Ethernet to connect to the system owner router. For Wi-Fi or cellular installation, use the following link. Connect the inverter cover back. The storage system is ready for the next stage. Join us in the next video that shows how to activate, commission and configure the system. Thank you.